Well, with governments in Asia, they focus firmly on the future and with cyber attacks on transnational fronts becoming ever more frequent, that's certainly been a top of the agenda for commercial businesses and even governments around the world as they focus on beefing up defense. But how much of that is effective or even productive? Edgar Perez is a futurist and highly sought after expert on global technology, cybersecurity and digital transformation. Edgar, welcome to our studio. In Thank your you crystal much. ball of digital transformation, uh, artificial intelligence and quant computing, tell us what are the signs for Singapore and Southeast Asia? We are living in a world where superpowers mm -hmm. are being reorganized, restructured even. This is the place where the future is going to start. When you think about digital transformation, that's the initial step for companies actually to embrace artificial intelligence. So you think about the great application that we see in the world, not only in the western side of the world, but also in this part of the world as well, you will see that companies will need to digitize their operations. They need to collect data in their operations because that's the prerequisite for them to eventually leverage all the wonderful applications that are in development right now. When you talk about the future being here in our region, uh, what does the, the data tell us? You know, uh, tell us about the profile of the people that are engaged in that digital world right now. Are they uh, picking up the computers from you know, uh, uh, being in the crib or who are the people who are going to be left behind? We always are afraid about the people who will be left behind. But just remember, 150 years ago with the automobile, we thought that there would be a lot of people also who would be suffering because of this new technology. Eventually, we all embraced automobiles. And in the same way, now we embraced 50, 60 years ago computers. Now we're going to embrace also artificial intelligence. In 10 years, 20 years from now, we'll also embrace quantum computing. And I see that strong schools are also coming up here. Now we see also schools here that are preparing the people. Now we see startups that actually are becoming very valuable very quickly in this part of the world as well. Okay, so as you begin to paint that picture for us of how endemic in our mm -hmm. everyday lives, mm -hmm. um, digital technology, computing is going to be entrenched, uh, tell us who are the state actors uh, in this region, either on the security or on the counter security front? Well, in this world, if you, it's interesting because some people study the number of hacks that we see in the past. And unfortunately, in the news, we, from time to time, we hear about companies that have their information breach. So we see Company X. 100 million records breach. This is happening all around the world. So definitely actors also would like to take an advantage and also would look at legal means and also some illegal means. So what's the lesson, the moral for all of us? We have to be prepared. We have to be careful that now we have to be prepared to respond to these threats, getting ready from the startup. We cannot develop software that is not going to be protected for cyber attacks. We cannot allow our users not to be, not to be aware that they can actually be victims of spear phishing people trying to get access to their systems. That's part of the new normal now. We have to be prepared for that. I'm glad you mentioned that phrase, the new normal. Uh, mm -hmm. When we look at the new normal in our region, China, India, all across ASEAN, the average age of mm -hmm. the individual is below the age of 30. It's mm -hmm. a very young uh, future mm -hmm. generation in Asia. What are some of the parameters mm. for cybersecurity for digital transformation given that demographic? The, the great thing is that the people who are 30 or younger grew up in this new world. Of course, in our organization, we still have people who are older who might be facing a new world when we tell them about we have to be careful about emails, we have to be careful about attachments, things like that. But nonetheless, now more and more people definitely grow in this environment so they actually can respond quickly to the trends that we see today and the trends that we'll see in the future. Remember, we have this conversation now, 10 years from now, we might have a different conversation because we will face new threats and also new opportunities. Well, I do want to continue this conversation <laughs> with you, Edgar, for the next 10 years, but <laughs> given where we are today, <laughs> what would your advice be on cyber security? When, when we think about that term, where is the priority for governments, for private business, and for individuals? It is the security of who or what? For individuals companies and also governments, we have to secure our infrastructure. We have to know what is really important for us to protect our information, our intellectual property, information of our customers. That's relevant. 
You don't see these elements in a balance sheet, in my financial statements. Yet, they are super important because if there's an attack, a compromise in these elements, my position, my financial standing, my reputation with my clients, my partners, it's going to be impacted. And that's what we need to protect. It's a fascinating conversation and one we're just at the beginning of. Thank <laughs> you so is. much for your time today. Thank you very much. Rest. My pleasure.